Hello everyone. Welcome back to the latest lecture session. Until now, I guess we covered uh, a bit more than half of the content that we wanted to cover. So the course obviously is wastewater, half of it, water, the other half of it. Wastewater, our needs and objectives are different. In the context of water, obviously the objectives are different. Let us look at what it is that we did in the context of wastewater. A quick summary. What do we have? We have what do we say particles like cloth rags and so on and so forth. We have heavier particles like grit, inert particles which will settle pretty fast. So, preliminary treatment, right? And then we have suspended particles in the wastewater, primary treatment, gravity is our friend. And then we have mostly soluble COD or BOD and we use the bacteria or nature as our friend. We supply oxygen, we degrade it it meaning the BOD or the organic content and we form flock forming bacteria or microorganisms pardon me and they form flocks are heavier settle down and then we looked at nitrogen and phosphorus removal yes and then we looked at disinfection obviously relatively more uh, what do we say encompassing. In the context of water what is it that we are concerned about? So, Depending on the source, obviously you can have uh, what do we say toxic compound present or such, then the kind of treatment mechanism that you would choose would obviously be different. But we are obviously going to look at the general cases while covering the different kinds of techniques that you can use or modify or employ according to the needs. Overview, where do we get the water from? Typically surface water, if surface water or good quality surface water is available, in general with respect to or considering the water stress uh, in India, good quality surface water or even surface water of any quality is not usually available. So, people end up uh, what do we say drilling uh, personal municipal not municipal groundwater pumps or uh, pumps to uh, pull out or pump up the groundwater and use it. But in quite a few municipalities, you still have piped water distribu uh, water drinking water being distributed let us say 1 hour in the morning, 1 hour in the night and such. So, let us look at the principles and hopefully you know in the coming decade we will be in a much better off position. Let us see where we are. So, when I am going to design a plant, a water treatment plant, right? earlier we used to call uh, with respect to waste water, we used to refer to the plant as sewage treatment plant, sometimes as waste water treatment plant. Again, different people, different ways. I am going to call this water, drinking water treatment plant as WTP, fine. Okay, water demand, right? That is something that we need to be able to look at. So, why do I need to do that? Obviously, I need to know what is it or for or how much uh, capacity should my plant be able to cater to or what should be the capacity of my plant. So, for that, obviously, what do I need to do? or what do I need to consider? For example, I can look at the need right now and build a plant, but the plant construction itself might take two years and then the population might increase, uh, might decrease, but rarely uh, at least stagnant or increase and then I will be left with a redundant plant pretty soon in five years. So, I am going to plan ahead, let us say 30 years typically, let us say or 25 years depending on the relevant uh, availability of capital or the growth in that particular area. So, how long let us say 20 period, 30 period design period is something I need to consider how far into the future. Once I do that, I then need to see what will be the population that is expected uh, within this particular area that I am trying to cater to cater to, right. So, then I need to be able to estimate the population and here comes the tricky part. Uh, people crunch numbers so on and so forth, but you know human beings they typically do not follow or do not fit the patterns described by a uh, set of formulae. Depending on uh, social conditions, economic conditions, you are going to have growth, you can have what do we say uh, people leaving the community and such. But again, these are aspects that we need to look into. In general, we look at the trends in the recent past and use that as an estimate. Obviously, we also have what we say some indication based on the kind of growth it has witnessed in the recent past, 
that can be an indicator. We always obviously are going to look at the census data and then we have the three or four formula that we use. But again, keep in mind that the formula are only indicators, rarely will people depend only on these formula, let us see. So, that is something to keep in mind. So, what have I done? I am now looking at let us say 25 period as years as my design period. I am able to estimate the population that will be present in this community or locality 25 years down the line. What else? I need to look at the expected uh, what do we say water demand per person or per capita right and then I will be able to calculate the relevant needs and that is what I guess we have here demand period, population and how much right. So, time, number of people per person how much is it that they are going to consume. After this I also need to consider you know uh, contingencies let us say uh, fire that is one aspect for which people always have to design and another aspect is again you are going to have variation in flow or the need for water during the day. For example, we saw pretty good graphs in the context of uh, waste water where how sewage was being generated and how you had higher uh, what do we say water inflow into the sewage treatment plant around 11 or 12 because people wake up at 9 or let us say 8 o'clock and then morning ablutions and water is uh, discharged. If water is be being discharged, they will also need water. So, obviously, as we uh, look at our day, we will use much more water in the morning, some during the afternoon and again some during the night. So, again there will be variation in uh, water uh, demand every day. So, that is something we need to consider, right. So, these are the four aspects we typically consider, let us see. Let us move on, design period. So, the time period for which the facility will be able to meet the demand or the design capacity. So, I am concerned about what will be the design capacity. So, how is it that I come up with uh, what is this design period? So, there are some thumb rules again you can always or should always look at this uh, CPHEU manual for India for different countries they have their own uh, what do we say guidelines or such. For example, in the US I think the different states have different guidelines. So, that is one uh, muddle there. So, regulatory aspects as in government guidelines typically have to be uh, considered. If there are any constraints, binding constraints obviously that is one aspect. When I am talking about design period obviously population growth comes into the picture right. As in if it is being explosive growth I cannot and if it is difficult to predict again that is another aspect. So, rate of population growth is something that we are also going to uh, look at when I am looking at the design period. And it is not as if I can say that I am going to design it for 100 years. Why is that? The structures that I build, be it the cement or the concrete structures or the equipment that I use, you know, mechanical and uh, electrical equipment that I use have their own lifetimes. So, the cost of replacing them, maintenance, and certainly their lifetimes also come into picture when we are considering the design period. Why? That is tied up with how easy or difficult is it to expand. In general, in India, difficult to expand earlier or even now we still try to have the water treatment plants outside the city, but with the rapid growth near the uh, what do we say cities or in and around the cities. Now, we have the water treatment plants and even sewage treatment plants within the cities. So, again these are aspects that we need to consider why expansion due to lack of uh, land or relevant aspects is going to be an issue. And more importantly or equally importantly I guess. So, for example, my population growth is something like this ok and my de my design. So, this is the year and this is the population. So, let us say this is for the design I am designing it for this population let us see right. But as you see for most of the time or quite a significant fraction of the time the population is pretty less. So, during that particular period when there is relatively less or minimum hydraulic load how will the plant perform let us say. So, that is also one aspect to uh, keep in mind. I might not plan to capture this entire what do we say population growth in with uh, only one plant maybe multiple plants later or such yes or what do we say uh, standby areas or units which can be used or set up later let us say. So, different aspects come into uh, picture when we look at the design period. So, typical periods you know we have I guess uh, some information here which will give us an idea. 
So large dams, again, people think that these are, what do we say, going to be there forever. But I, again, as you see, it's one or two generations. Treatment plants with fixed facilities, you know, the facilities, uh, concrete and such, 20, 25 years. The equipment, 10 to 15 years. And distribution network, which is a cri much critical aspect, at least in my point of view, at least in India. So, 20, 25 years. As you see, you know, they have their own lifetime. So, your design periods obviously need to consider these aspects, let's say, right? So, population forecast. So, once I know, you know, which year or uh, until which year will I try to capture or cater to the needs of the relevant population in that community, I will now need to calculate the population. So, I am going to estimate or forecast the population. So, in general, the best way is to look at data, but uh, I'll give you the example, let's say Ghaziabad, uh, not Ghaziabad, pardon me, Greater Noida. So, uh, one of the more uh, developed and relatively planned, what do we say, cities, if I may say so, mostly just, uh, what do we say, agricultural land earlier, but with the shift towards industrialization, obviously, some people looked far ahead and Greater Noida, at least they did. This was with respect to or when they were planning for the NCR, that was way long ago. So, what do we have now or what did they have? They, you know, divide it into zones, different areas, you know, different land, uh, what do we say, population density per area and group housing projects and they estimated the water demand and such. But initially, the growth was very less and their distribution network too was patchy uh, or water distribution network or sewage capture or uh, sewerage network too was pretty patchy, right? And later there was explosive growth. And also this growth was not something that was constant as in when the economy was doing good, there was a floating population of almost 10 lakhs and the water network, sewerage network used to be under remarkable stress. And then when the economy wasn't doing good, again, people used to move out. Again, you know, you had issues or such issues. So, considerable, what do we say, issues or, you know, our aspects are uh, at play. So, again, it's not as straightforward as we look at. So, population forecast, you know, it's not as, what do we say, easy as we expect it to be from the formula or such. You have this, at least in India, a considerable uh, floating population in the centers of economic activity, right? Let's move on. So, some variables we will uh, come at uh, or look at. So, this is P after N decades, population after N decades, decade is equal to 10 years, one decade equal to 10 years, so right, P naught or N equal to 0 right now or at the end of the last known census, yes, N is equal to obviously the number of decades between now or this particular end of the last known census and the future point or time at which you want to calculate the population. X, you know, different uh, numbers or variables I understand, but these will be clear once we look at the uh, simple example later. So, average, which is arithmetic mean of the population increase in known decades, you know. So, let us say I look at over, uh, look at it over 10 year period, let us say, right, or not 10 year, 30 year period. So, per year, per decade, pardon me, you are going to have some uh, increase. And the average increase over these three decades, that is what we have. That is the average arithmetic mean. So, growth rate, this is depend upon the geometric mean, right? Geometric uh, mean, yes, right, so on and so forth. And average of incremental increase of population in known decades. We will see why or how this comes into play. Uh, Let us look at some of the usual population forecasting methods. So, here, Okay, so what do we see? This should have been M. So, this is arithmetic mean method. So, what is this? We have a base population and it is growing at a constant rate. It as in the population is increasing at a constant rate. If I take it, uh, if I take the derivative, right, with respect to x, okay, it is not with respect to x, I would say. Okay, it is with respect to x, pardon me. So, we see that it is a constant, right? It is just we assume it to be constant. So, there is going to be a uh, linear increase, let us say. So, this is the case when it is, uh, you know, the city has been developed and occupied to the maximum extent possible and there is more or less constant, what do we say, growth or sometimes even, uh, uh, I would not say decay, decrease, but that is rarely the case or even stagnation. 
So that is what you will see or that is when you will employ this arithmetic mean method. But what about uh, the case of uh, greater noida which we mentioned earlier when we had explosive growth. So then we will look at this uh, particular geometric increase method as mentioned or you know as we have uh, or we do have here. It is for younger cities where or especially those where people can see considerable uh, what do we say sources of income and there is quite a few people uh, coming in again but rarely do we see this level of increase. If you take the natural logarithm and you look at that you will see that it is more or less similar to the exponential uh, growth here or let me take a shot at that. Okay, so I guess as you can see it is uh, exponential uh, growth out here right r was the geometric uh, mean that is something that we saw earlier n is the number of decades p is the uh, population uh, of the at the last known census p n is the population after n decades let us see. And the one is incremental increase as in it is an increase but it is going to not increase at a constant rate but incrementally. So, I will say uh, 4, 3 uh, but pardon me 4, 5, 6, 7 again I just use random terms but you understand what I am trying to get at. If you see the formula here so this is for that uh, arithmetic mean method right. But here we also have this incremental increase terms let us see right or here uh, and this is for uh, city that is uh, not too big, not too small and has decent growth. And what is this term going to give you an idea about? The average value is added to the present population along with the average rate of increase let us see right. So, again I think once we look at the relevant uh, data it will be clearer let us see. So, this is that average increase right and then the average rate of increase also is being considered here in the second term. So, looks like we have one particular uh, set of data. The population of a town right uh, as per census records is available and assuming that the scheme of water supply will come will start from 1986. So, this is back to the future it is required to estimate the population 30 years from then. So, 2016 still back to the future and also the intermediate population after 15 years right. So, we are now in the past 1986 and they want to use the data from 1921 to 1981 to get the data or forecast the population at 2016 and 2001. So, we are going to look at all the three methods. So, first this is the data 1921, 40, 44 so on and so forth fine and if I plot it this is what I guess it looks like right you see that it is almost linear if I may say so. Yes, other than during the initial period, so it is uh, more or less linear, but again we will not uh, what do we say look at this for now. But in general if I was uh, if I had considerable information about the reasons for it or reasons for this linear growth and also looking at the economic conditions and the forecast that is how you will be able to come up with a more educated guess. Yes. So, what do we have here? We have the three formula for the three methods. Yes, constant increase incremental increase and more or less like compound interest. This is like simple interest like complain, uh, like I guess uh, compound interest right. So, arithmetic mean method arithmetic mean right this is the population. So, 44,000 minus 40,000 change so 4,300 same case 60 minus 44 16 I guess 15,000 change so on and so forth. The sum will be this but I want to take the average of this. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1 lakh 18,000 by 6. So, that is what is going to be my constant I guess right. So, that is what we see here. We are assuming that the population will increase each decade by almost 19,000 or almost 20,000 that is what we have here right. So, in 2001 because we were looking at 1981 data right. 1981 so 2001 so 2 decades or 20 years so what do we have here so n is equal to 2 p naught at the end of 1981 was this 2 decades we are assuming that it grows at the rate of 19769 
per decade. So, two times and this is what I get in 2001 and I think next one was 2016 and 1981. So, I guess 35 years, yes. So, 3.5 decades, again uh, constant growth, assuming that it grows at this, what do we say, 20,000 people come into the city every decade and thus we get it pretty simple, right. Let us move, uh, move on to the geometric increase method and look at how to calculate that R or such. So, here we have the population and rate of growth. Earlier we just looked at the actual, uh, what do we say, difference. Here the difference divided by the base. So, 44,522 minus 40,185 by 40,185. Right, that should come to this. Similarly, we have the rate of growth for that particular uh, decade, right, for each decade. And then you will calculate R, the geometric mean, right. So, geometric mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yes. So, what do we get? The geometric mean is 0.244. So, in the previous calculation, we already looked at R by 100, yes. If it was percentage growth, then we would have had to divide by 100 here but we already calculated uh, R by 100 earlier, yes, that is what we have. For example, if we multiplied this by 100 to get percent, then I guess it would have been 10.8 percent here and 24 percent growth per uh, decade and then we would have had to divide that by 100. But again, we calculated R by 100 earlier, again different ways to go about it, it is just uh, algebra. Right. Uh, so, using that we can calculate the population in 2001 when n is equal to 2. Similarly, when n is equal to 3.5, we will plug it in and get this particular population. Then what about the incremental increase method? So, this is obviously all, all this part is similar to the arithmetic increase where we had the constant increase I guess, yes. So, as you see here we are talking about incremental increase as we are assuming that each decade it will increase a bit more, incremental increase. So, what is the increase in increase? So, 15,000 minus 4,000, so 11,000, 15,200 minus 15,800, so decrease, right? 23 minus 15, 8, 25 minus 3, 23, 2, so on and so forth and then the average increase in increase or average, not average, total incremental increase is 30,000 over this uh, period, right. So, average of incremental increase of population, so that is what we have out here and 6047. So, that is how you calculate the uh, y, right. So, let us uh, move on. So, population in 2001 is equal to P naught 1981 N two decades x, we have that average increase per decade. This we calculated when we were looking at arithmetic mean method. So, n is 2, n plus 1 is 3, 6047 is what we calculated earlier and now we end up with this, right. So, similarly again just plugging it in and getting the relevant uh, value. So, just uh, to summarize, uh, we have the population at the base here. Now, each decade it is increasing at this constant rate and from the decade after, right after this first one, you see that its incremental increase is this. So, that is why I guess we have to look at this particular aspect, okay. I think uh, one aspect that should have been looked at was, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is for the period after, so this should be by 5. So, maybe a minor change in calculation, but uh, you understand what needs to be done. So, that is a change in aspect, it is the average here, it should have been 5, not 6, right. So, uh, over the 6 decades, average is this, or you know, it is going to increase at this rate. And after, let us say, the first decade, it is going to increase by 30 by uh, 5, I guess, right. So, that is the rate at which it is going to, uh, the increase is going to increase every after every decade, right. So, that is something to uh, keep in mind. Let us move on. So, what do we have here? Comparison of the, what do we say, uh, values we obtained from each of these methods. Let us just look at, let us say, 2016. So, arithmetic mean, geometric mean and incremental. So, obviously, constant rate, relatively lesser value. 
incremental increase higher value assuming that it is exponential increase exponential it will look like something like this. So, that is what uh, we have out here right. Let us move on obviously here we will see that relatively lesser disparity between the values, but as the time period increases geometric mean is going to race ahead that is what you would see right it is exponential growth out here right. So, let us move on. So, per capita water demand. So, uh, we now know uh, what period or until what period and from that we know what population to uh, cater to. Now that I know the population I need to know per person I know per day what is it or what are the water requirements. So, depending upon where they are it varies uh, depending upon the kind of water usage, but typically if it is in cities you know more or less the functions that water is used for and you can come up with an average value right. So, per capita water demand in India it is around 135 liters per person per day right. So, for communities up to again based on this uh, reference we know that for different uh, what do we say uh, types of communities based on the population the consumption is relatively different let us say. But in general I believe 135 liters per capita per day right. Uh, 135 liters per person or per capita per day right that is the average in India, but again you see that depending on the population it changes. Uh, and what is it typically used for you know urban and rural areas, rural areas typically water requirements are less we are talking about water requirement for personal use or such or household use not for agriculture or such purposes. So, drinking water and such cooking fine ablution I guess they did not consider that here, but flushing of toilet here it comes into play here it depends on the kind of toilets and such and kind of flushing systems that you have here right. And bathing again depending upon bucket shower or such and washing and such too you will see that there is relatively supposedly uh, greater requirement for water. So, rural areas relatively less urban areas relatively high and other aspect is that uh, you know you always need to be prepared for the contingency not just the daily variation in water or re, uh, need for water. So, here you are going to look at fire fighting demand demand that is required for fire fighting. Uh, in India though even if you provide the water access uh, to or you know accessibility you uh, know for the fire engines to the relevant areas is an issue. So, that is why we hear such uh, catastrophes and catastrophic uh, loss of life in India, but again that is a different aspect I guess. At least fire fighting demand we need to be able to need the uh, meet the need for fire fighting at least from the engineers point of view. And again you have different empirical formulae and again P is in population uh, P is for population in 1000. So, you can calculate this I think they use this or these formula in different uh, exams, but it is not worth going into detail in this class here. But please be aware that there are different formulas and different uh, what do we say limits and such. So, with respect to industries depending upon the industrial zone again greater Noida some areas were earmarketed as uh, industrial zones and obviously, for those zones you have to have uh, some idea about what industries they are and then you need to be able to provide the relevant uh, what do we say uh, water supply infrastructure let us see. So, again that is why we see this here again leather for 100 kgs 4, but again you know typical consumption is pretty high quality of paper or uh, paper relatively high consumption, but again note that the unit is different right you cannot compare uh, ton here and 100 kgs here right. So, but these are the different units. So, per 100 kgs 4 kiloliters is required per ton of paper 200 to 400 kiloliters. And now the uh, government is pushing for what do we say water recycle such that uh, net water requirement from the ground or such is relatively low or negligible for some uh, what do we say uh, kinds of industries right. Let me move on. So, variability in flow demand right. Uh, what do we have out here. So, as we saw for the waste water uh, you know what do we see I think in the nights this is the picture morning it increases afternoon it comes down there is a peak again in the evening and such and this is the cycle I guess. But if this is the sewage cycle 
or you know the flow into the STP obviously it is based on the water that is being used. So, the water consumption pattern too will be similar to this. So, there is obviously always going to be a variability in demand let us say. So, maximum daily demand I think these are the ones or empirical relations that are used typically in India. So, different countries they use different relations I think this is the one that is used in India let us say. So, how do we get the maximum daily demand? It is 1.8 times the average daily demand let us say right. And one aspect that I need to mention before I go further is that in India how is it that water supply uh, takes place or how does it end up at the homes. So, you have your water treatment plant here under pressure sewerage flows under gravity water you are pumping it up you need more energy obviously because typically from low or lower head to higher head right it goes to your tanks and from that you know it comes to your particular pipe. So, I need to supply the energy required let us say. So, under pressure it is going to flow so that is one thing or depending upon the type of system before it goes directly from the water treatment plant to the homes you will have underground reservoirs let us say UGRs underground reservoirs and from here you will have right at that place what is called overhead tanks right overhead tanks and from these overhead tanks you know the pumping will go or you know the water will be pumped to your particular uh, home. So, that is the typical uh, what do we say way and because of this particular buffer capacity in either the underground reservoirs or the OHTs uh, typically even though you know maximum flow is expected or you need to look at that that is typically taken care of. Uh, when we look at the UGRs or OHTs let us say and also the pump capacity. So, that is where it comes into play that is something I wanted to mention. So, maximum daily demand, maximum hourly demand of maximum day right. So, peak demand. So, it seems it is considered as 1.5 times the average hourly demand and we are getting this average hourly demand from this particular case maximum daily demand let us say 1.8 into average daily demand by 24 hours per day. And from that we get this 2.7 into annual average hourly demand let us say right or this I guess yes you can look at the variables and see which one is equal to which one. So, what do we have again maximum weekly demand and maximum monthly demand again these are all pretty simple what do we say empirical uh, what do we say formula it is not worth going into detail here. One aspect as we also looked at earlier in the case of the CPHEO or other reference data we see that as the population increases the variability will decrease as you can see variability evens out the variability decreases. So, that is something to keep in mind and design flow at the treatment plant water treatment plant what is it that we look for maximum daily flow and some safety factor. But with respect to the pumps right what do they need to be able to calculate or look at maximum hourly flow right this is with respect to hourly flow and more importantly to need the fire demand. So, this is something that we need to consider especially when we are looking at the distribution pumps or OHTs let us say right. Let me move on. So, water quality standards but uh, looks like I spent considerable time in this session. In the next session we will see what is the kind of water we need to supply. Until now we have looked at how much water we need to supply and the next session we will see what is the kind of water we have to supply. As usual, thanking you for your uh, patience.